Ephatha, be opened. These are the words which I think really ring through our gospel, in fact, through all of our readings today. These words which Jesus uses to open the ears of one unable to hear, to open the mouth of one unable to speak. Yes, Ephatha, be opened. And St. Mark in his gospel preserves these Aramaic words of Jesus in his Greek gospel, and we too, we keep them in our English translation, which we hear today. These words, Ephatha, be opened. Now, on one level, we have this very physical healing of the man by Jesus, but also there is a deeper spiritual level too, and we should never really separate the two, but we can examine and look into this. Because in his account, Jesus' healing of the deaf man, St. Mark is also linking Christ's ministry to the prophecy we heard about in that first reading, to the prophecy of Isaiah. Now, Isaiah, in his writings, in his prophecy, foretold this great messianic mission, this great saving mission of the one who is to come. And of course, we know that that mission is fulfilled in Jesus. And one of the links St. Mark uses in his gospel that we've just heard today is he uses very similar language, similar vocabulary, similar words. In fact, one of the words St. Mark uses in the Greek, the only other place I found it in the, in the Bible is in the Greek version of Isaiah, which we have heard today. This idea of the lips of the dumb, the tongues of the dumb which sing for joy. So St. Mark is making a very clear link between Isaiah that we've heard in that first reading and Christ in this fulfillment of the messianic prophecies, the great fulfillment of the longing of Israel. So St. Mark is telling his listeners and he's telling us that this Jesus who we hear about in the gospel, this is the Christ, the Messiah that Isaiah foretold because this Jesus is the one who enables the deaf to hear, the blind to see, the lame to walk, just as Isaiah promised. So St. Mark is telling his listeners, he's telling us too, that this Jesus is the one who fulfills the hopes of all the exiles, fulfills the hopes of all the pagans, fulfills the hopes of all the world. He's telling us that in this Jesus, in this Christ, God has done what man couldn't. He's telling those who will listen, he's telling us that this idea of the Messiah who is coming, this great longed for Messiah that we read about throughout the whole of the Old Testament is no longer a future hope. He's telling us it's no longer something to be longed for. No, he's telling us that this Messiah, he is a present reality. He has come among us. He's telling his listeners, he's telling us that Christ is here, that Christ is among them, that Christ is among us, and that they, and we, if we have ears to hear, if we have eyes to see, then Christ will also work his wonders in their lives and in our lives too. Now you might say that's all very well and good, but how do we let Christ in? How do we let him work in our lives? What do we have to do? And I think our gospel passage helps us there as well. Because what did Jesus do when he healed this, this man born deaf with his speech impediment? He took him aside first. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, we are told in the gospel. Now, why did he take him away from the crowd? Why did he have to go into such a detailed and, well, quite graphic healing process? Yes, of course, Jesus could have just clicked his fingers or said a word and the man would have been healed. Why did he go to the lengths he did? Why did he do what he did? By taking this man aside, by showing interest in him, by removing him even momentarily from the commotion of everyday life, from the noise and the busyness of the crowd in order to heal him. Jesus is telling us through St. Mark's Gospel <clears throat> that in order to listen, in order to be healed maybe from our own deafness, whatever that may be, our own inability to take on the fullness of the Word of God, that we too need to spend some time apart from the commotion of the world, from the busyness of the world, we need to spend time with him. And of course, Christ is always waiting. They're always ready to take us aside in private, as it were. Because we too, we need to spend time with Jesus at some distance from the hustle and bustle of daily life. And Christ reminds us in this healing encounter with the deaf man, this healing encounter with him, that the first place that happens when we step aside in private with Christ 
the first place that happens is in the intimacy of our own hearts, in the intimacy of our own prayerful encounter with Christ, with him. So that's the first place it happens. But it also happens elsewhere. It also happens in our Christian community because this man didn't come alone. This man was brought with his friends, with his relations, with the people of the region to Jesus. He was brought by them to Christ with his friends, with his own community. So the encounter with Christ also happens in our Christian community, be that at Holy Mass each Sunday as we celebrate today, which is, I think, quite definitely far from the usual hustle and bustle and commotion of daily life, or be it in the sacraments, yes? Because he's left those to us too, to draw close to him, to step away with him in private. <laughs> Indeed, this word we hear in the gospel, which rings out through the gospel, this ephatha, this be opened, is still used in some form of our rites of baptism when we, when we welcome new members into our Christian community. This idea of opening the ears, opening the eyes of the, the members of our Christian community that we may be more fully related to Christ. But above all, in the Lord's words and in his actions, in his cure of this deaf man, we can certainly see, I think, how he works in our lives if we let him, in our souls, if we let him take us aside, if we spend time with him like we hear of this man in the gospel today. Because if we let him, Christ will free us from our sins in the sacraments of baptism and confession. He will open our ears to the word of God at which we hear at mass and which we read in the scriptures. He will loosen our tongues, yes, to speak to him and to proclaim his praise and to worship him rightly. In a few minutes, we'll hear this phrase, let us give thanks to the Lord our God, yes? So this is part of loosening our tongues to come to him, to speak to him, to praise him properly. And indeed, I think the first words that this deaf man, this man no longer deaf, this man able to speak now, these first words that he would have said, or the first words he would have heard, would have been this ephatha, be opened. And then the first words he would have said would have been praise of Christ, praise and thanks for the great wonders he has done in his life. Yes. So we too, we too in our own lives, I think we too are this deaf man we hear about in the gospel. We too are witnesses in our lives to the work of Christ, to his love, to the great things he works for each and every one of us. And as with the disciples and with the friends of that deaf man, we too can respond with unbounded admiration to the works of Christ. Again, as we hear about in this gospel, we too can say, he has done all things well. We too can praise and worship him like this. So maybe in this mass, in this holy mass today, let us ask Christ to open our ears to hear him more clearly. Let us ask him to open our eyes, yes, to see him more fully and to loosen our tongues so we can speak of him and speak to him and speak of the joy and the praise and the healing that he can bring to each and every one of our lives. So let these words of the gospel today maybe ring in our ears today. Ephatha, be opened.